Hello everyone, this is going to be part one in my KSP2 low mass series. The idea of this series will be to pick various challenges in KSP2 and then to complete them with the least mass launched from the Kerbal Space Center. For part one, we're going to go with one of the simpler challenges possible, just getting to orbit. However, simpler does not necessarily mean easier. The simpler the challenge, the lighter we're going to have to try to make it. My attempt at this challenge is going to use three of the smallest engines available in KSP-2, the micro-sized spider engines. These are configured in two stages, the bottom stage having two of the engines, three of the Oscar fuel tanks, bottom stage weighs a total of 340 kilograms, and then the top stage has one of the spider engines, one of the fuel tanks, and weighs a total of 170 kilograms. The total mass reported in the build screen is 510 kilograms, but Kerbal Microengineer is showing 515 kilograms, and that seems to be the more accurate total free of any rounding, so we're going to go with that for the official amount. The biggest challenge in flying this was getting the arc of the ascent profile right soon after leaving the launch pad. Small differences in input right at the beginning could lead to massive differences in how the flight ended up going. It is possible to adjust later, but forcing the nose up or down to correct the arc has massive losses in efficiency, so it was absolutely necessary to get it right, right at the beginning. One of the things not in Kerbal Space Program 2 right now is automatic fuel crossfeed. This is an extremely important feature for building efficient designs like this, and as of right now, the only solution I could find is having the fuel window up and manually transferring fuel at exactly the right time and then decoupling. Not the most elegant workaround, and I'm sure I wasted more fuel than I would have with automatic fuel crossfeed, but it did get the job done. We have not gained that much of what is needed for orbital speed with the bottom stage, but it's done the hard work of getting us out of the thick atmosphere of Kerbin, and it's given us enough altitude and vertical velocity to play with. Then the top stage, Delta V, can just go straight into that horizontal velocity that we need to be in orbit. A significant amount of aerodynamic tomfoolery has taken place here. The three bottom fuel tanks, for example, were attached in line and then offset into their radial position. This gives this craft fairly minimal drag when facing exactly prograde, but quite a lot of drag if it's not. Fortunately, I was able to get it into a good trajectory here and just let the gravity turn do the rest. As we head towards orbit, let's talk a little bit more about some of the aerodynamic tricks in this design. These continue to work pretty similar to what we saw in Kerbal Space Program 1. I highly recommend you do not try any of them in real life. There's two nose cones on this design, one on the bottom of the bottom stage and one on the front of the front stage. The one on the bottom has been left in its expected orientation, but the one on the front has been flipped 180 degrees and is facing backwards. This still succeeds in preventing the top fuel tank from having massive drag, but a reverse nose cone in Kerbal Space Program generates less drag than a forward nose cone. After the flipping, these are offset to wherever I need them to go. Offsetting parts does not affect the drag that stuff generates in Kerbal Space Program, so you really just need to get everything attached in an aerodynamic way, and then you can pull the parts wherever you want. The engine on the top stage does work even when the bottom stage is attached, and while it's attached, it's actually partially firing through the nose cone of the bottom stage. I found that as long as the engine was close to the edge of the nose cone, this still worked perfectly all right. I did try using miniature wings with this design, but even after all the aerodynamic trickery, something this small is really just not that aerodynamic, and I found it more efficient to just fly more vertically and get out of the thick atmosphere at low altitudes as quick as possible. We have now reached a stable orbit. Our apoapsis and our periapsis are both above 70 kilometers. In Kerbal Space Program, at least, this is the beginning of a perfect vacuum. And Robotug, the friendly probe core, is happy. This should be the end of this mission, but this channel does have a tradition of attempting to land refrigerators. So we're going to take rough aim and try to land this thing without heat shields, landing gear, 
parachutes or any recovery devices whatsoever. By putting Robotug into hibernation, I was able to save just enough electrical charge to give me some ability to crudely control my descent as we got closer to the ground. With that landing at the Kerbal Space Center, we have succeeded in getting a 515 kilogram rocket to orbit. We've also succeeded in our first successfully landed refrigerator of Kerbal Space Program 2. As mentioned at the start, this is part one in what's going to be a series of low mass challenges. Some of them will be tiny and narrow challenges such as this one. Some of them will be broad and grand challenges. If you have some ideas of what you'd like to see for a low mass challenge, please let me know in the comments. Thank you everyone very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.